I'm only going to give a few sort of key words first about nonviolent communication because most of this session is a practical exercise um, and I want some participation hopefully and you'll actually see how this stuff can work. On the flip chart here are some key words which are some of the most important words in my, in my mind about nonviolent communication, what it's about. But it is about nonviolence, so this is really about about not more than no harm, it's about really having a sense of, I guess, um, love and compassion for all beings. So it's about real nonviolence, as in Gandhi's definition of nonviolence, and that was where a lot of the inspiration came from. Compassion for myself and for other people. Connection. The intention of nonviolent communication is primarily to connect without blame or judgment important aspect. This will all come up as we, as we go through the session. And finally, that everyone's needs matter. So that has a lot of implications, obviously, for how we organise things in the world. The second short thing I want to say is um, that non-violent communication is not just for people who are physically violent or people who have personal relationship problems. It's got many, many applications in the world, and these are just some of them here. So there are applications around personal healing and relationships, which people are often most familiar with when they come up with MVC. People are often drawn to it because, say, they've got a family issue or a personal issue. Yes, that's very important, but there's all these other applications also here, which are many and very far-reaching. And MVC is just as much about social change and transformation as it is about personal transformation. So because we're on a peace weekend here, a lot, a lot of people are interested in peace building, peace activism, I decided to run a, a different kind of taster, which is going to be a conflict transformation process that we're going to do here, to, so that you can see how MVC works in that kind of situation. So MVC is, a, is an opportunity to approach conflict in a slightly different way, and to really transform conflict with the emphasis on making sure that everyone's needs matter and that we're, we're really wanting to take other people's needs into account. It has been used in political and um, military conflict situations to great effect around the world. So, we're going to have a, a scenario here, and I'm really hoping that so many of you, there'll be at least five people who want to take a role in a role play conflict. So, if you're kind of that kind of person, in a minute I'll ask you to put your hands up. I'll just tell you about the, what the situation is. So, not by the communication, we hold quite a lot of summer camps and events and things like that where we all get together and try to learn more and be together as a community. And I've been to a lot of these myself and one of the situations that often comes up is what we're going to role play here today. So imagine that we, all of us here, are participants in a summer camp. We won't necessarily all have to talk, but we're all part of the camp here. And um, this camp is where there's people of all ages, children, adults, families, mixed people. and. Um, there's a lot of NBC workshops going on, and there's also people with kids, and quite a lot of, usually, women with kids without anyone helping them, particularly with the children. And in the camp today, there's a woman, um, who we'll call Martha, who's come up to the camp organiser, who's called Lewis, and very, very upset, very, very angry, saying, it's not fair, I can't go to any workshops because there isn't a creche, there's no help with the childcare. What are you going to do? It's not fair, and you should put on a creche so that women like me can go to workshops. Okay, so that's the conflict that we're going to be walking towards today and see what we can do with it. We may well not get to a resolution, but as we're walking through it, we'll see various of the principles and tools of NBC that are coming come into play, and hopefully we'll learn a bit about it. So, is there anybody who would like the idea, I'm going to give you some pieces of paper now. Um, perhaps you could hand these out for me, Robert, it's not helpful. <coughs> Organizer. So the first person is called Lewis, he's a member of the core team who organised this camp. So Lewis himself, as you'll see on the other bit of paper, he's been on the core team for three years, he's very committed to NBC, he wants to help everybody, he's been working hard, he would like all the adults to share responsibility and help with the children, whether they're parents or not. Would anyone like to offer to be this person? This situation. All we're going to do is be talking about how we kind of what we think is going on for us. Thank you very much, Lewis. The next person is Martha. This is the single mum who's made a complaint. 
She's got a five-year-old and a two-year-old. She's got a partner, but he's not interested in it, I see. We've got one over here for this one. Thank you very much. Uh, Martha, you're exhausted and overwhelmed by trying to cope with two young children and camping. Next person is called Amina. She's another single mum. She's a friend of Martha. She's got a child aged 10. She tries to help Martha, but her child's a bit more independent. Anyone? We've got two more after this. A woman, friend of Martha. No one? Yeah, thank you. Next person is Albert. He's Martha's five-year-old son. He really likes the campsite. <laughs> he loves the campsite. There's lots of children to play with. And the final person is called Dave. He's a single man, uh, maybe aged about 60. He's single, doesn't have children. He came along because he wants to learn NVC by attending workshops. He finds young children hard to talk to and he doesn't want them disturbing the workshops. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. So the final person <laughs> is my part. So I'm the kind of facilitator or mediator. Imagine that I may be on the team of this camp helping to organise it. So we've called a meeting about this because Martha has come to Lewis. Can Martha and Lewis just put their hands up again just to remind me? So you're Martha. Lewis. You're Lewis. Okay. So... <laughs> Would you like to adopt a different name? Not death. Okay, right. Thank you. So, I think the first thing that we're going to do in this session, I'm also pointing out here on the floor, if there's anyone who's comfortable getting down on the floor, while everyone's talking, you could be looking at one or two, one or one or one of these bunches of cards here. And in non-violent communication, we're really interested in what needs we have. And these blue cards here depict a lot of needs which are kind of universal to most people. And these pink cards are feelings, because in the MVC, our feelings point to whether our needs are met or not. So if anyone's great at getting out on the floor and wants to do something while they're listening, you can, whilst you're listening to anyone speak, if you hear anything that sounds like one of these feelings or one of these needs, I suggest you pick it up and just put it at the front here and we'll get a picture of what's also going on for these people. Anyone like to do that? Anyone comfortable getting down on the floor? Yeah. Cool, thank you very much. Maybe at least one person on the pinks, the one on the blues would be great. Yeah, Lewis, brilliant. Yeah, so a couple of people can do it, that's so we're going to start with Martha. So, as I'm doing this, I'll be kind of doing it on the kind of level of real life, as it were, in the role play, and a bit of kind of pointing things out as we go along, so let's see how it goes. Okay, this is an experiment. Right, so Martha, um, I guess you want to tell Lewis here like what, what your problem is, so would you like to have a word with Lewis about that, and tell us all what's going on? I'm just sick of it. I've just turned up for this camp. I really, really want to be here and I really, really need it desperately for myself. How can I? I can't go to any of these workshops you've put on. I've got nobody to look after my kids. I can't... What do you expect me to do? I just, I just feel like invisible, like you're not seeing me at all. I mean, what's the point? Why, why would you be here if you can't include everybody? I'm just, I haven't got any access at all to what's going on here. I might as well not be here. Martha, so what I'm hearing from you is that you're feeling really exhausted and overwhelmed and you would love more inclusion and you're also here to learn and to, to, to get involved in the camp participating. So it's really painful for you to not get that access and that inclusion and you're saying that you're desperate and you, you really need this camp. So I'm guessing that space to learn and to contribute and be part of the community. So not having the childcare is really, is really painful for you for that. Okay, so what I'm doing there is like listening to what's going on for Martha, not necessarily the actual words, but what's going on underneath that. So here we've got people who have picked out something here. We've got upset, disheartened, frustrated, and disappointed. Martha, does that sound kind of like some of what's going on for you? And then we've got also here recognition, to be heard, belonging, inclusion, learning. So there's some of the needs that Arthur's highlight that Martha, sorry, is highlighting there that, that are met for her. Thank you, Martha. So, Lewis, would you like to respond on behalf of the core team? What's going on for you when you're hearing Martha's complaint here? Yeah, hi, Martha. I, I really feel for you. I feel really sorry that you feel so exhausted. We're doing our absolute best here. We've been um, trying to make a, a system work where everybody shares the childcare between them, but that it just, just hasn't seemed to have come together and I'm trying my hardest to get that, you know, working. But, 
it isn't at the moment, and um, yeah, I don't quite know what to do. Thanks, Lewis. I'm hearing on your part, you're kind of sad and hurting really to hear Martha's suffering now, aren't you? And it sounds like you would love participation and inclusion as well, but you're kind of a bit hopeless about how that's actually going to happen, maybe. Uh, and you, you were hoping that people would share the childcare, but so far it's not really happening for you. Okay. So is there someone here, for example, this gentleman over here, who's got um, another view about that. So when, you, when you're thinking about the idea that on this camp the idea was to share the child, yeah, was it you? Yeah. yeah. Dave. What's your name again? Dave. 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 So Dave, would you like to tell us how it's for you being here, hearing that you might be asked to help with the children so people like Martha can get a bit of access to workshops? Well, my first thought is... Oh, sorry. My first thought is, well, Martha, did you think to ask anybody before you came about your special needs rather than just coming up and saying... <laughs> I need support and now the focus is on your needs rather than on the group's needs and <laughs> so of course you have these needs but how could we as a group um, meet our own needs while respecting your needs Okay, just a minute. So yeah, so, so Dave, is, Dave is hearing Martha's problem and, and he's sort of, he's a bit puzzled, I'm guessing, needing a bit more understanding of why Martha didn't bring along or notify the camp about this need for support. So maybe Dave's needing a bit more understanding of Martha's situation there. And also I'm hearing a bit of reluctance to sort of really contribute to Martha and people like her because he's saying, what about the rest of us? So he's also valuing everybody else's need for participation. Maybe wanting a bit more mutuality or balance. Uh, all the attention shouldn't be on Martha, I think something like that you were saying, wasn't it? Um, does that sound, that sound about right? I've, I've had exactly this, somebody, they were deaf. I was in a group that was exactly like that. They were deaf, but they hadn't notified anybody that were deaf. There were no, there would, could have been aids, but there were none provided, and he sort of, got three quarters of the way through the meeting and then stormed out because his meetings weren't being there. <clears throat> okay, so you're imagining things will work much better for the group if there's more information about people's needs. That's, that's something, isn't it? And more communication. Like, if you love more communication with people if they think they need something a bit extra. Okay? Uh, Martha, do you want to say anything about having heard that from Dave? Yeah, it just makes me feel even more invisible and, um, you know, that my special needs um, do not even realise that you're alive as a result of people like me giving birth and this is like, it's not special need, it's life and, uh, yeah, this needs to be brought into every single setting. Thank you. So for you, Mother, again, it really sounds like you're wanting some acknowledgement of the value of what you do as a mother. That, that having children is, is what we do for each other as a group. So there's a kind of contribution there and you would like some recognition of that, I'm guessing, in the help to then look after those children. A kind of society where that was a shared responsibility because of the shared benefit. Is that kind of what you mean there? Yeah, thank you. Why don't we try and hear from Albert, who's Martha's little boy here, who, <laughs> I think there isn't any crash for Albert and he's kind of, like, you know, his mum is trying to go to workshops, can't really get anywhere. What's going on for you, Albert? Grown-ups talking to each other are so boring. <laughs> so, so boring, having meetings and meetings and meetings. I want to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'm hearing that you're really bored, Albert, especially this kind of situation, a meeting with adults talking on and on. It sounds like you'd probably love to play, have some fun. And you was mentioning the beach, so kind of nature and just having a good time in the fresh air. And ice cream. Ice cream, right. <laughs> so nice stuff to eat and some fun and pleasure and play. That's what's going on for Albert. Um, so, okay. And there was someone else here. It was um, Amina, I believe. Yeah, a friend of Martha's. Have you got anything to say about the, the situation, Amina? Well, having heard both sides, I think... <laughs> is that my little door boy, Sean, feels a little bit like Albert. 
And I thought that we could just match the two of them together. And he's quite responsible, and yes, they do need adults together. I have had some thoughts that bringing Sean would put the two of us into a situation where we have to cope, and I have sort of taken responsibility. I can see Martha's point of view, but then she is my friend, yes, and I know where she's coming from and so and so forth, but on the other hand, I do think that we should have maybe talked about that in front of, uh, before, before that, and not just dump the, the whole situation on the whole group and then feel that we need to be the center of attention. I, I agree with Dave there on that, on that point a little bit. So, uh, we're sitting with this all. We've got a lot of kids. I have seen at least, uh, at least five of, uh, of, of them together. So what I would suggest is that we just have the mums all together and the dads who want to help, and then just set up a crash and take turns in, in uh, participating in the workshops. That shouldn't be such a big deal. Thank you, Amina. So Amina's saying she can hear both sides. It sounds like she's kind of concerned about people like Martha and also has got some practical suggestions about a bit of cooperation um, between some of the parents. So from Amina's point of view, it would be the parents who sort of take responsibility rather than non-parents. Is there anyone else in this community today who, is, who feels they've, they've not been heard yet about this issue? Is it painful for you or stirring for you in some way? I've got two there. I'll just go for you here. Um, what would you like to say? Well, I thought that um, the speech of the gentleman whoever it was over there, uh, was a wonderful way of ignoring the whole situation. Right. Okay, so ignoring the whole situation. So it sounds like you haven't got a sense that he's picked up what's important here no. for you. Yeah, yeah. he's missing something as far as you're concerned. So yeah. the, the thing that's important here for you, is that about the shared responsibility for children? Well, I think he just hasn't heard the hurt and complaint and... Um, uh, well, the feelings that she was trying yeah. to express. So for you, you'd love everyone to be heard? No. I would love them to hear. You'd love them to hear. So you'd like people to pay attention to yes. each other here? Right, okay. So paying attention, careful listening, and valuing people's contributions. We've got another person who wants to have their say here. Hello everyone, thank you for sharing all of your feelings about what's happening right now. Um, I came to this camp uh, also to meet and share, and I think that children are part of our community. <coughs> like a, the workshop should be as fun for us as for the children, and they should not be just waiting away somewhere for children. Like they should be part of our workshops, and we should have fun in our workshop. If it's not fun for children, how it can be fun for us? So I think also something else is. I know that even if like I'm not a mother, but I love children and I'm happy to take care of other children. So I think just sharing maybe the story with everyone. Lots of people will be happy to take care of them while doing other workshop. But I think like children should be part here, should be here and having fun with us. And we need to think about like a world where children and us are not separated. Thank you. Thank you, and that, that really sort of does tie in with what I think Lewis and the other team were hoping for really on setting up the camp, this idea of this world where children and adults could be integrated more and sort of recognise the value of that. Um, and I'm hearing that you're saying that we all want the fun, so the children want fun and the adults also want to have fun, and also for you it is actually fun hanging out with children. So that's a way of having fun and also contributing. Yeah. Interesting, but Dave, I mean, how, how would that be for you? If, can you imagine it being fun to have a perhaps there's a space where there's children and, and adults? We are learning in BC, and the kids are there, and you're having fun. How, how would that sound for you? It sounds it could be fun, but how would it work? You know, I don't, we're in the scenario we're setting up, I'm not sure. You know, are the kids crying? Are the kids fighting? You know, what sort of do they become the centre of attention, yeah. or are is, you know the 90 adults who aren't connected to children? How are their needs being met? Okay, so you're still concerned about the needs of the group, the adults who come along who haven't got the kids with them, 
um, and also that it sounds like you're worried about need for sort of peace and quiet during the workshop. And if the kids were there, that's one thing, but would they be actually disrupting the workshop is one concern as well. Isn't it? Yeah. So we've heard there about one really that again that need for learning and being able to pay attention to one's own um, sort of stuff that's going on, isn't it? And not necessarily being distracted by unwanted kind of noise. So Martha, coming back to you again at the moment, are you feeling like any more better understood by the people in this community at the moment? How's that going for you so far, this circle that we're doing? Yeah, definitely. I can I can hear some sense of understanding and support. And, yeah, and it also feels a bit more clearer what the need is. OK, so I'm just going to go back to Lewis again. So Lewis is one of the organisers, and, and you've heard from various people in the circle. I wonder if you've got anything to say now. Because before you were feeling quite hopeless about being able to, to get anywhere with this issue. So would you like to say how you feel having heard what's been said today? Yeah, so I'm realising that we should have uh, addressed this before the camp started. That we should actually have got people to understand um, that we would be sharing childcare between us. And that needed to be made explicit before anyone signed up, so there was no shock. And I think um, next year we'll do a mixture of including the young people in the sessions, but also having adult-only sessions, but a rotor for childcare. Would you imagine that the opportunity to help with childcare would be a choice for adults or would it be an obligation for adults? No, what we'll do is make sure that everybody who signs up is willing to take part in, in the responsibility of raising the children together and honouring what the role of the mother is, which is, which is a, a gift to our community. And that needs to be part of the system. Okay, so it sounds like you, you want a, a sort of radical difference from how society is normally, that you would like it to be integrated into how this community is for this particular week, that we share responsibility. And you, you did say that you would have the idea of adult only sessions. <coughs> so I'm hearing, a, I'm hoping, some recognition like Dave, who, who would like to attend an adult only workshop. I'm still not sure though, I'm just wondering whether you're saying people would have to agree to that when they signed up. So it sounds kind of like there's not much choice there for someone who wants to come along and not participate in helping with the kids. But I'm wondering whether that will be an issue for someone, for example, like Dave, going back to you for the final time. If, if when you when we you would put us onto this camp, there'd been a requirement, if you like, that this is an all-age camp and we, we expect everyone to somehow help with the kids, how would have that been for you? I, I have been at events where I came with my agenda of what I wanted to do and then somebody said, oh, will you help with the accounts and sort of heave me out of the main room or to do the cooking or something? And then I think, well, you know, I signed up to do this thing. I'm not... So it should be... I mean, I suppose I would... If, uh, if it was made clear, but I, I, I guess I would be reluctant, to be honest. So I'm hearing there about the need for choice and autonomy. <coughs> it's really important to Dave, and I'm, I'm guessing he's not the only person in this room who also values choice and autonomy. Um, so I, I'm personally, as another member of the team, a bit unsure about it being a kind of a requirement. And at the same time, I like the idea of making it a request and making it more explicit that it might be asked of us, but I would like it to see it as a, as a choice rather than a requirement. Yeah, I've got someone else here. Um, yeah, I, I think um, having, um, having had four children and taken them on to lots of peace events, um, I, I think, you know, if, if the person who you want to leave your children with is keen and experienced and enthusiastic about being with the children, it would be a lot better than someone who's just been put on a rotor. <laughs> yeah, Albert, you might have something to say about that, I think. I don't get what I want. I want to go home. <laughs> so why, why are you all talking for so long about getting what you want? I don't get anything I want. Albert's, yeah, feeling quite pissed off by this time, he's not hearing anything about what he wants. 
which was going back to earlier, was like fun and to go to the beach, play, ice cream. Then, ice cream. So yeah, I'm guessing we, we perhaps we haven't like looked at Albert's needs enough in this. What would really be fun for Albert? Would it be fun for Albert? Would it be fun for you to be looked after by an adult who was told to do it, or would you rather as an adult who was really keen on playing with the kids? I want to go home. You just want to go home. Yeah. So in this place here, you're just not having enough fun at all. It's more fun at home, or you get more choice at home. Oh, it's boring at home. Okay, so just one more time. So here, there are more people and there's some other kids. Have you been able to play with them at all yet? A little bit. A little bit, okay. I'm guessing that the choice to go home might not work so well for Albert's mum, who's put a lot of investment into getting here. But I, yeah, I, I would really like to point out that Albert and the kids' needs are important, they do matter. And I'm also hearing about the choice and autonomy for some of the adults and the real need for support and understanding for the women in Martha's situation who haven't come along with a, a ready male made kind of childcare provider as it were. And um, yes. Amina on my little girl a boy is now really getting impatient because now this is all this walk uh, talking and I I am fully with this other kid. Actually half an hour ago I had made the suggestion that you just go off and take the two children, take the three, three children and, play, and, and put them somewhere and have fun. But then these adults are just going on and on and on. So why don't we do it? Okay, so that's a pretty clear request from Amina. And I'm suggesting that, yes, that could be something that's taken up. Anyone who would like to leave at this point and go and play with the kids. There's also people here who might want to carry on with this kind of discussion in terms of understanding and connecting. Right now, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave, leave the last word to Martha. We're just going to wind this up in one minute. I, I feel like this process and the offer that extended here was like a miracle happened to me. It was something so radical and unexpected that, that was possible at all, that there should be an acknowledgement that we're all part of the earth and you know that, that we are life giving we all have a responsibility to to take care of the children even if it is i haven't birthed children myself i should take responsibility and there can be a process group for those who struggle with that but it, it's a vital responsibility to, to clean up the earth and to take care of our children thank you so I've got some time here, sorry. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so that, we'll, we'll close that kind of role play for now. But I just want to highlight here, we've got a lot of needs here on the floor. Um, would someone just like to read out what some of them are, maybe? Cooperation, mutuality, respect, contribution, structure, understanding, consideration, need to be seen, community, fun and play, Food, water, air, ease, collaboration, clarity, effectiveness, and right at the end for Martha, a need to matter, and the need for support, and a need for, uh, and uh, met need for appreciation. Thank you. We've also got over here recognition to be heard, acknowledgement, belonging, learning, and inclusion. So, just by hearing a few voices there on, on an issue like this, we, we've highlighted a lot of needs here. And if we imagine all of these needs ourselves, usually they're things that we also value. Uh, so a, a really powerful aspect of NBC is being able to, to listen and pick up and hear and reflect back to people what is going on on that need level, because it's a way that we can connect with them. Because if I hear someone who I might initially perhaps not agree with, like the Dave role, once I, I might think, oh well, he doesn't want to do this, he doesn't want to do that. But if I'm hearing what his needs are around his needs to matter, learning, choice, autonomy, it's like, yes, I get that because I need those things too. So instead of having to see him as an enemy, I'm seeing him as someone that I can actually connect with. So as a way of walking towards a conflict, this is a really powerful tool. I, we've got about three minutes, so I'd like to hear any sort of comments or feedback and just to remind you that on your chairs around on the floor is a piece of paper about a foundation training in nonviolent communication that's happening here at Braziers Park in December and also we have here Laura Harvey who's a fellow NBC trainer colleague of mine who also lives around here somewhere Oxford maybe and also offers training so there's plenty of opportunities to learn more in NBC any comments or feedback
I don't really want to put it down on it, but um, these people that are going to look after the children, have they been vetted? It's <laughs> an interesting one and not directly related to the feedback on the sessions. I'm just going to leave that to one side. Anyone else? Uh, I suppose it makes me think of, of when people get together, um, if we can share what we all agree with, you know, from a foundational level, it's a place to start. There might be disagreement on that, but distilling it right down to sort of basic needs, you know, sort of the right, and it might be some of those cards people don't agree with, but if you can get maybe one or two and then build from that, then you see that they're all interconnected and then you start to build a picture and you start thinking, well, this is, we're talking about reasonability, really. Yeah. What is, you know, is it what's not I, I just, I mean, in my role, I just wondered how many women, certainly initially, saw me immediately as the enemy, and whether the process ameliorated that towards the enemy. Did anyone feel more positively towards Dave by the end of the meeting compared to at the beginning? Do you want to show hands there? Yeah, quite a few there. So yeah, I guess I think it, it, well, there was something there probably in hearing what's going on here. Mark, uh, do you have any feedback on Mark? Do you have anyone else like to say anything? Maybe two more people, let me need you close. Uh, yeah, Pardon? Sorry, you. No, there was one right by you. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I went to a, a meeting at the local rectory about a year ago, and they were all adults, and uh, a lady brought in her little boy, and um, they just sat there. She obviously bought a few toys. And they just sat there and played and listened, and I think everybody was delighted. But that was only one child, of course. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Inclusion in, in something can work, can't it? It's a bit of a problem. Any one? Yes. Just can I just... Yes. You can use it, but... <laughs> well, I just, I'm picking up what Dave said. I, you were, I think Claire was very clear to never say, oh, well, you're right and you're wrong. You know, there was actually no blaming and judging throughout the whole process, and that's, I believe, one of the main strengths of this process in making it work. I was just going to say for the October Rebellion, it's um, one we could do with space holders at different sites who uh, could deliver MVC and so put in call out for that. But other than that, is there very short kind of... Um, something available that we can, uh, other people who are willing to facilitate space could pick up just for very simple communication. Um, there's quite a lot of things online, uh, on Facebook for example, and on YouTube, uh, there's books and there's lots of people, uh, there's a network of about 30 for, uh, sort of certified facilitators in this country, plus a lot more who share NBC. There's a website called, which is, the piece of paper you've got there is a printout from that, which is nbc-uk.com the best place probably to look for trainers and what's going on and events and there's lots of stuff here on social media especially Facebook. Okay. Just, just on yeah. the point there, yeah. a Facebook group called MVC to support Extinction Rebellion and there's some yes. online de-escalation training there which would carry across to the camp. Yes. And most XR groups are in touch with MVC practitioners and vice versa. So there's a lot of connection between XR and MVC practitioners including myself and Laura as well and other people, yeah. Okay, well thanks very much everybody and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the afternoon.